Hey guys, and welcome back to Building Habits. In case you're new here, this is a series where I introduce a set of rules you should try and follow in every game you play. The goal is to teach you strong fundamental principles that we will improve upon as we go. This series is my personal take on how to improve in chess, starting from 400 ELO all the way up to 2000 ELO and beyond. I'm gonna choose a series of rules that I have to follow what you might notice is that you will miss chances to play winning moves. That's okay. The goal here is to focus on the fundamentals and I'm trying to get you guys to build good habits and play high percentage moves that will help you increase your rating. Oh, uh, we're playing MDM. MDM without the A, Spain without the S. Okay, so E4, Knight F3, we're gonna go Knight C3. Uh, we'll go Bishop C4, we've done this every single time so far. Every single time so far, and we're gonna get Castle next, Castle ASAP. Is this a speed run? Nothing of the sort. Okay, A6, let's Castle, I'm gonna get Castled. Um, see if he goes, yeah, b5. Generally, if I get attacked, uh, I usually bring my bishop back. Just sort of that habit that um, if the pawn attacks me here, I go back there. If the pawn attacks me here, I go back there. That's something we've, uh, that's something we've done in the past. Um, bishop b7, okay. Now, yes, he's threatening this, but even if he wasn't, I would do this move either way. d3. I want to get my bishop out there, rook over, queen up, and rook over to d1. And you guys have seen this setup from me every single game so far. So what I'm saying is that if you're at 400 ELO and you start changing your opening and playing exactly what I'm doing, your rating should go up. That's just plain and simple. Bishop e3. We'll bring the rook over, queen up, rook over. And there we go. Okay, bishop b4. Every time we, we see that move, we play this move. That should not be a surprise. We did that in the very last game that we just played. He's going to take, I'm going to take back. No problem. Okay, he castles. Let's bring the rook to the middle. Queen and rook over are the next moves. BP big perm. Thanks, bro. Glad you're enjoying. Okay, queen d2 and rook over. You think I should help Myth? He's 372 and struggling big time. It's probably because he doesn't know about this series. Real talk. Real talk. I swear to God, if if someone who's rated 300 watched this series, they would improve. They'd literally improve. Like they would have to. It'd be by force. Rook d1. Rook d1. Okay, and what's my next move going to be? Assuming he doesn't attack anything or do something funky, what's my next move? Now that I've finished development, I've moved every piece one time. Yeah, h3. There we go. You guys are getting the hang of it. Pawn h3. And look, this is even better. I attacked the knight. Easy. Easy. Okay, he takes. Now, I could take this with a number of different pieces. I'm going to take with a rook because usually so far in this series, every time I've captured on e3, it's been with the rook. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to keep that habit up. I'm going to play rook takes. And let's get some random pawn moves on the queen side up next. Now that we've played h3, done development, probably some random pawns over here. Um, another good random pawn to push is the center pawn. Anytime that your random pawn can be a center pawn, you generally want to do that. Uh, so we're going to start with this one, classic uh, rando pawn move over there, and probably our next move is going to be d4, because it is in the center. So we'll see what he does. If he captures, I mean, we'll be happy to capture back. Yeah. What do I play against d4? I play d5. Against e4, I play e5. Nice and simple. Now. That's a capture. We're going to take it. We are going to take it. 
Okay, some more some more random pawn moves. I'm you know probably gonna play this next. Um, and I'm pretty much done my my pawn moves. Uh, rook over here or here would make a lot of sense because those files are now open. Those files are now open. Okay, g5. What the heck is Buddy doing here? Uh, I'm running out of random pawn moves. Let's go here and I'll probably play this next. Hey, Sui. Okay, g4. He's attacking our knight. Well, first things first. That's a capture. Immediate. And knight can't go here or here. Those are my center squares. So, question of the chat. Where do I put my knight? If I can't choose the center squares, where do I put that guy? Important decision. And remember, make your, make your choice based on the fact that you're following the the rules that I have outlined. Not, don't necessarily look for the best move. Look for the move that follows the fundamentals. Now, I see a lot of h4 suggestions. Believe me, knight h4 is the best move. Credit to you. But h4, h2, those are moves on the side of the board. We're looking to centralize things. We're going to choose e1. It might not look the prettiest. You might not be happy with that move. But 91, over a course of many, many sample games, if you move your knight to the side of the board, you're eventually going to get in trouble. It's not going to be a good move, and it's a bad habit to get into. Keep your knight away from the side. Keep it towards the middle of the board. All right, uh, f5. That's a capture. I'm not even going to calculate it. I'm just going to take it. Um, I already said d5 was probably, or d4 rather, was going to be one of my next moves. It's a central uh move and is with a pawn so i think we're just going to go here three pawn why not yeah i'm not even going to calculate it not even going to calculate it king f7 uh that looks like a capture to me so immediate immediate okay rook h8 what am i going to do here wait a minute I learned something a while ago. I learned something a while ago. Hey, do you guys remember that game where I got checkmated on h8? I learned that the queen beside the king, supported by something, is a checkmate. I learned that. I remember that. We had a nasty checkmate. You guys all laughed at me. But, but it's happened once, so I'm not going to let it happen again. How do I stop the queen from going here? Well, <laughs> rook h3, I'm going to lose a whole rook. Uh, queen there, well, if I play king f1, queen there is not going to be mate. It's the only move to, to stop mate that doesn't lose material for free. And in general, we're not trying to lose free material. So it's the only move. It is the only move. King f1. And that's just because we, we realized from before that queen h8 was checkmate. Queen h1 is going to be checkmate here. That's why you take your losses and you review them, you analyze them. You start to learn patterns. Like if a queen ended up here in front of my king and I can't take it, that's mate. If it ends up here beside my king and I can't take it, it's probably mate. Queen h1. Well, let me just touch the king here. You're going to see that dot appear. It's the only square I have, so I'm going to go here. No choice. No choice. I had a check? Well, so what if I have a check? There's no rules about me having to check my opponent. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, that's a capture. We're going we're gonna to do that capture. Okay, uh, there's a capture here, so we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. Rook here. I don't really know what he's up to. I'm just going to go for another capture. 91 had purpose the whole time. Yeah, there you go, guys. The knight on e1. Guarding that g2 square. Very important. Queen takes. Uh, king only has one square. King only has one square. Uh, but yeah, usually it's harder to block checks when you're starting out. So usually what happens is you, you just click the king. And it'll if you have this enabled, it'll show you all the legal squares you can move to. So I'll go king up, for example, here. Check. We're going to touch the king. We have three options. Um, well, let's, you know, make sure we keep the king centralized. 
Okay, that's a um, check. We're going to take it. Uh, let's centralize the rook, middle of the board. Okay, well, I've got a pass pawn, so I'm going to use my king to try to promote it. Okay, here, let's try to promote that pass pawn. Remember, we're in the end game now. Activate the king, use it as an attacking piece, and there you go. There you go. Fundamental chess, once again, uh, comes away with a victory. That's what we call a KO. Here we go. We got the black pieces again. E4, you know we're going to play E5. We're going to copy. Put a pawn in the center. Knight here, controlling those center squares. Knight here to mirror that. Bishop there. And you guys remember? I play bishop here, not knight there. Why? I don't want to allow this fried liver. So I'm going to play bishop here. I'm going to play bishop here. Now I'm going to bring my knight out. Now I'm going to bring the knight. Uh, so we're going to get castle. Castle ASAP. That's the rule. Um, if he plays his bishop here, we're going to play h6. You guys know that. We're going to attack any bishop that appears there. Okay, we're going to play pawn in the center. He plays d4. We're going to take that. We take everything. We take everything. And when we get when our bishop gets attacked, what do we do? We always go back, so we're still attacking the center, right? So hopefully you guys are getting a feel for these moves. It really is the same kind of stuff every single time. Bishop back, still attacking the center. d5. Our knight has to move. Our knight has two options. Knight d4 and knight e5. Is knight d4 safe? Well, there's one, two attackers, and I only have one defender. So no, I have to go to e5. There we go. How does it stop the fried liver? Good question. If I bring my knight out, the knight can go to this square. It's nice and safe. But if I bring my bishop out and the knight goes there, well, my queen just takes it for free. So it stops it. It prevents the whole thing. So if you're if you are a person that plays this, and people do this move to you, and they're just killing you over and over, like they're winning games over and over, don't let it happen. Just play bishop there. It'll never happen again. Literally. Never again. Okay, he takes. We're going to take back. We're going to take back. Okay, we're not afraid of this move. We're going to play this. Pawn to h6. He takes us. We're going to take it back. Well, one of the things we've learned at this level uh, in playing our games is that once our knight goes out and that knight goes there, we castle. And once we castle, our rook defends this pawn and the knight and bishop are attacking it. If they play knight takes, that's going to be good for us. If we get a knight and a bishop for a rook and a pawn, very good trade for us. Very good trade for us. Okay, let's finish our development. Our bishop can't go here or here or here. Well, it's kind of obvious where our bishop's going to go then. Only one square, and we're going to get these rooks to the middle. We're going to get those rooks to the middle. Is h6 preemptively to stop bishop g5 bad? I don't think it's bad, but our habits that we're developing so far is that we're going to play this whenever we see that. Uh, d6. <laughs> I don't know what that move is, but it looks like a free pawn, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it, capture towards the middle. Um, our queen gets attacked. Okay, uh, queen attacked. Uh, I'm not really sure what what move we should do here. Haven't really been faced with this position too often. Um, you know, there's all sorts of moves to consider, but queen d8 looks the simplest. Uh, queen g6 also attacks the center, so that makes a lot of sense. Queen g6. Let's make a move that attacks the center. Oh, it's a bit unlucky. Uh, 97. Haven't really learned forks yet. Good thing we have that escape square. It would have been checkmate. Uh -huh. Uh Okay, well, we don't want our king, uh, we don't want our king out that early, so we're gonna have to take with the pawn, but I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this. Lost the queen there. Uh, queen takes d6. Oh, this is tough. Well, I can make a developing move that also defends my bishop. So there we go. When do we learn forks? Oh, at the very next level. How convenient. How convenient. Okay, queen takes. Well, hey, let me finish my development. Rooks to the middle of the board. 
Rooks to the middle of the board. Okay. Um, queen g3. I think let's uh, like finish our development, basically. So this is a square that I always try to go to every time I play. I'm just going to go here. Uh, he goes there. What can I do? Maybe use the center somehow. Rook in the middle of the board. Rook in the middle of the board. He plays e5. He has some ideas here. He has some ideas here. Okay, it's not, it's not the easiest to notice that this is being threatened, but I don't think it's unreasonable here. He's got two pieces lined up there. Any way I can prevent that? Any way I can prevent that? I can go here. I can go here. I like bishop f5. It um, you know, controls the central square. It controls the central square. I got forked says with a thousand bits that he's not really sure where the sarcasm is anymore. And he feels like maybe he's actually learning. Well, that's the point. I'm just numbing you in the false sense of security. Uh, Bishop takes e8, threat. Uh, let's move towards the center. So pieces towards the center. Look, every single piece covering a lot of central squares. I might have the worst position. I've fallen for some tactics this game, but you know, I'm I'm still here. I'm still here. I got a few threats. Uh, let's let's get, kick that bishop out. You know, this is an idea that we've had before. We see a bishop there. We sort of uh, start attacking it. Let's see where he puts it. I mean. Well, you put it somewhere where I can take it for free. We know what I'm going to do. We know what I'm going to do. Take a free piece. Yes, please. Uh, pawn there. I mean, take a free pawn, I guess. I, I'm just in the business of taking things. I'm in the business of taking things. I see free bishop, I take. Uh, pawn, I take. Okay. He makes what I would say is probably a good move. Uh, rook to the center. Controls the center. I'm going to go uh, rook here. Another move in the center. Try to take this pawn. Ah, he goes here. Hang on. I've seen this before, haven't I? I've seen this before. This is a meat idea. The queen beside the king. The queen beside the king. That's a checkmate. How can I stop that? Well, in the past, I've always done this. G6. Yeah, in the past, I've always done that. In the past. Uh, I need a new move. I need a new move. That's checkmate, and I do need to stop it. I know it's checkmate because the queen right in front of my king and the rook attacking it. I've always gone g6. It doesn't work here for some reason. I need to. I simply need to prevent it. Um, what's the most natural way to prevent it? I'm actually not sure. Uh, maybe bishop here, rook here, or rook here. All those are options. Um, I think maybe, maybe bishop here is the most natural. Um, sometimes when my bishop gets attacked... I bring it back. So bishop g6, I think, makes sense. You know, just like this bishop, it sits back there, and it happens to block the queen as well. Queen over. Well, my last move was this. My idea is to take the pawn, so I think I will take the pawn. Two rooks in the center here, controlling a lot of squares. Why not rook? I'm just sort of sticking to the habits. Like, you know, when my bishop gets attacked, I bring it back. So bringing this bishop back here makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, he goes uh, on there, I guess. Let's bring the rook in. We're getting close to the end game, at least for me. I don't have my queen, so I'm going to try to attack my opponent's pawns. Uh, king up. Bishop and rook. A threat. A threat. An attack. We'll we'll follow through with an attack. Okay, king there. Let's let's uh, let's get these rooks uh, nice and protected. Cover the center. Why am I not tanking my rook? I don't even know what that means. Okay, he's attacking my bishop. He's attacking my bishop. Let's let's move back. Let's move to safety. Move to safety. Okay, let's move to the center. Move to the center. Oh. Let's check. Uh-oh. This is tough. Oh, that's free. That's free. 
Oh. This guy's just a flagger. This guy's just a flagger. Maybe I was winning in the end. Well, at least I'm not 666 anymore. Remember, if you ever lose on time, you can always tell yourself, reassure yourself that your opponent is just a flagger, they're not good at chess, they only play to win on time, and you're the better player. Make sure to keep repeating that over and over to make you feel better. Flagger, yep. That's all he is. So we unfortunately fell for a tactic here. What was it? It was 97. Okay, 97 was unfortunate. Here we just needed to choose a safer square for the queen. Um, but even after that, I think we got our pieces to the middle, and at least we had a shot this game. It wasn't just immediately game over. Um, we can analyze it, though, because we did lose. Okay, we have a missed win. What's our missed win? Okay, you know what? This is actually a legit missed win. Apparently, it's checkmate in three. I will say that is a legit missed win for the first time ever. <laughs> Bishop f5 is not only a fork, but it's doing something over here when our bishop is free and can be taken over here. Very unlikely for us to find, of course. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. An actual missed win. Yeah, it's starting to get scary. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the game, I think, was not that bad. I mean, you had pretty decent accuracy. Solid. I mean, our position is good here. It, it was really just this. And you can see it's going to recommend queen d8 as a better move. Oh, it definitely does, uh, I joined. Definitely does. So we're back. Uh, basically, we just ran into this tactic, and we got in trouble there. But what I was going to say um, before we ran out of memory was that the reason I wanted to do one more session today is we were at about six, 650 ELO when we started. And after many, many games, we're at around 650 ELO at the end. So what I'm saying is that maybe these, uh, you know, these fundamentals get you from 400 to 650, but they might not get you much higher, which is quite possible. That's why there's many levels to this series. The point is that you can make massive improvement like a 400 should be able to go to like 600, 650 by following these rules. And it doesn't mean that they're just going to become a 1000 just like that. No, of course, you need a lot more things. You need some tactics. You need maybe some pre-moves. You need, you need to add a few things to get to a thousand. But the point of the series is to see how far we can go. And it's right around now where we're starting to plateau a little bit. We've been at like 650 kind of the whole day today. So we get to see an idea of maybe what kind of the maximum rating we can get to playing like this is and that's also very reflective of your chess career everybody in chess when you start out when you when you learn how to play chess when you uh, get taught something by a coach or you you watch a video you're probably going to improve from that but after you improve nobody improves in chess just like that like nobody just goes from zero to grandmaster you always improve a little bit and then you hit what's called a plateau where you'll stay at the same level for a little bit, and then you need some, some boosts. You need to learn something new, something that's going to take you to the next level, and then you'll plateau even higher. Plateaus aren't bad things. It just means that you want to keep increasing the rating that you're plateauing at. Plateauing is normal in chess, but if you're plateauing at 900, and then you plateau at 800, and then 700, you're going in the wrong direction. The point is you plateau going upwards. So right now, we're sort of plateauing. It's the first time we've had this in the series, and it's very reflective of what's going to happen to you in your actual chess career. When you make an account on chess.com as a brand new player, you start playing, maybe you improve to a certain level. You're not just going to keep improving forever. I mean, this should be very relatable. You're going to stop at some point. You're going to plateau. And right now we're plateauing, which means we need to learn something else. We need to add something else to our game. And that's what you guys need to do. You need to add something else to your game. You're not just going to improve by doing the same thing over and over. That's the whole point of the series. Let's get a few more games, though. Let's get a few more games. Um, okay, e4. Whoa, he's got some pre-moves in. This guy, this guy's skipping ahead. He's just skipping the fundamentals. Okay, knight here. I'm going to bring the other knight out. Oh, that's a trade. That's a trade. Okay, let's get a pawn in the center. 
probably going to get our other knight out. Our bishop can no longer go to that square, so it's probably going to end up going here, where it still controls the center. Okay, knights first. Okay, bishop goes here. We got to control some center squares, and we can't use that. Oh, we've seen this before. Every time we see that, we play h3. And if he takes us, we take with the queen. We've seen this. <coughs> yeah, Cairo Khan, this is one of the first times we've seen this opening as well. One of the first times we've seen it as well. Hey, that's a capture. We're going to do that easily. We're going to do that easily. Um, e5, knight takes e5. Well, our queen's attacked. Uh, let's let's keep our queen towards the center. You know, we want to control these center squares. Bishop d6. We're going to castle ASAP. Castles. Um, let's put our bishop out. F4. Yeah, F4 would be a good move, but that's utilizing a pin. Remember, the goal is just the fundamentals. Get castled ASAP. You went from 600 to 1,000 in two months, and now you're stuck. That's very relatable. I'm sure that happened to a lot of people. Like, you'll always experience uh, a huge gain followed by a plateau. That's what usually happens. Um, knight c6. So, one thing that we haven't seen today, but we have seen in this series, which is why I'm going to be careful here, is we've seen when there's a pawn here and it threatens to go forward, he is going to be winning one of our pieces. So... That's been a reason we've been losing almost all of our games when we were first starting out. And we quickly learned we don't want to have pieces like that when a pawn can go forward. Now, I'm not sure what that's called. I think it probably has a fancy name, but it's been killing us. It's been getting some wins. Uh, attacking our queen. Our queen needs to move. Um, I guess let's go here. Almost running out of squares. Spoon. Okay, thanks. It's good to know. Knight d4. Now, my queen, you'll actually notice here, doesn't have a single square. Right? Can't go to any of these squares. They're all covered. So, this is an easy move. I have to play queen d1. It's the only, it's the only safe square. It's the only safe square. Okay, see what he does. Remember, I still want to complete my development. Rookie one, fundamentals. I'm still trying to do that. Now, he goes knight there. Generally speaking, we take with the knight first. And of course, that's a capture. We're going to do it. My bishop's attacked. Well, hey, how about that square? That's the square I go to in this opening all the time. That's my favorite square. Finally, I can go here. Sure, let's do it. Rook to c8. Attacking my bishop. Um, bishop needs to move. Again, um, whenever I get attacked, I usually go back. Of course, I could defend it with b3, but fundamentals, I've pretty much always been going back when attacked and capturing towards the center. Capturing towards the center. Okay, bishop there. Um, I think we're just going to complete our development. So start with our rook. Probably queen and then rook uh, to d1. That's what we want to do. We've had that set up uh, many, many times so far. Rook e5. Don't really know what that move is all about. I'm going to go here. Um, rook d1. Yeah, rook d1. Let's complete that development. And bishop e3 is a square that we've put our bishop on uh, in the past. So I might go for bishop e3 next. Uh, but now that we're done all this, let me first start with my random pawn moves over here. And then something like bishop b3 makes some sense. Okay, it goes back. Let's go c4. Okay, c4 is probably not a great move. Unfortunate. Not all Random pawn moves don't always uh, work out. But we'll go for a few random pawn moves. And then we'll probably go bishop b3. Move in the center. Okay, rook takes, uh, oops, <laughs> dropped a pawn there. 
Let's go bishop e3. He takes, let's take. He captures, we're going to capture right back. Oops, haha. He goes h6. Look at this fundamentally sound player. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to see moves like h6. Trust me, if you see moves like that, those are players that are going to improve. Those are players that are going to improve. They are. All right, let's play a centralizing move. Rook in the middle, and it's guarded by the queen here. Okay. Uh, rook there. Well, that looks like a hanging pawn in the middle of the board, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Uh, queen takes. Okay, rook takes back. We're in the center here. His rook's in the center as well. Honestly, we've both been playing pretty well so far. He goes rook d2. He's attacking my pawn. Now, I have always said, when you get to the end game, attack pawns and bring your king to the middle. He's attacking my pawn. Am I going to worry about trying to defend that pawn? No. The main goal in the end game is king to the middle, push a pass pawn, and take pawns if you can. We're going to go here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing. Okay, take a pawn. Uh, here, we want to take a pawn. Okay, uh, unfortunately, I can't take that. Uh, maybe let's bring the king in. That looks like something. Bring the king up. Okay, we can't really get in the center now. Um, Got to use my rook to try to attack pawns. But that's, that's all we want to do. We've actually been doing very similar plans, me and my opponent right now. <laughs> very similar. Uh, free pawn, I guess we'll take it. I guess we'll take it. And you see my opponent, he's bringing his king to the middle. He's pushing past pawns. He's actually playing really well. Like He's, he's playing exactly how I would say to play. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't go forwards. Otherwise, I would. Um, he's pushing his pawns. Uh, we said our goal was just try to attack pawns. So we're going to. Okay, if we can go towards the center, we will. We're going to take this. Nope. Uh, we're just going to take pawns, take pawns, take pawns. <laughs> Yo, know, high baller's playing well. He's checking me again. Uh, Generally speaking, you don't go backwards if you don't have to. When it comes to the king, hey, if I can use my king, attack this pawn. Um, let's use the rook. Take all the pawns. That's all I've been doing. That's all I've been doing. Now I have some pass pawns. Now I can start to push it. Now I can start to push it. Let's bring the rook over there. And let's take it. He's going to get a queen. I've seen that before. You guys remember that game that I got a queen? And then he just got a free queen because I wasn't paying attention. What am I going to do here? I'm going to push this pawn. Pawn, go. Queen. See, he can't catch it. Oh, unfortunately, this is a little relatable. <laughs> unfortunately, this is a little relatable. Pushing past pawns is... Uh, not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Got to do it properly. I'm going to push our pawn. Credit to my opponent. He's playing a fantastic game right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll take those points. We'll take those points every day. He could have. He could have. I'm going to tell him. Very good game. And it was. I mean that honestly. I mean that honestly. He played like probably exactly what I what I would have suggested um, following the, the series. Like. He played very well. 
Um, we did win the game, but look at this wholesome Canadian chat. He said he blew it. I said, very good game. He said, you too. I said, GG. He said, GG. I mean, this is just good vibes. Good vibes. Good Canadian vibes here. He did play very well, though. Let's see. I, I won't be surprised to, to find out that he has very high accuracy as well. Like, uh, I think it was a, a very good game. There we go. I'm not here to analyze. I just wanted to show you guys that I thought his accuracy was going to be very good. And it was 82.9. Um, because it looked like he was actually um, following the fundamentals. Like, let's just flip the board and look at his position and see how closely it matches up. I think it's probably pretty close. So he has this opening. Uh, he gets the two knights out. He gets the bishop out. Sure, I took away this square from him. So he decided to go there. Bishop out. He trades pieces wherever possible. He goes e5. That's a pawn in the center. Can't hate that. Takes it back. Uh, he probably tried to take my bishop. Couldn't because it's pinned. He doesn't know about pins. So f4 he didn't see. He castled ASAP. Now here. Okay, he didn't take the bishop. I probably would have. Rookie 8 in the middle. Knight in the middle. Knight in the middle of the board. Trades. Rook developed. Trades. Bishop controlling the center of the board. Rook in the middle. Queen supports the middle. Controls the middle even more. I mean, b4, bishop back. I even do this. Guys, let me take a look at this game. This is like beautiful. That's a free pawn. He took it. Now he missed rook d8. But of course, that's because bishop there, you got to go for trades. You see how relatable this is? Queen takes, of course, rook d8 was the move. He plays h6. He trades. Attacks the queen. I'm just saying, like, if he's been watching the stream, I'm proud of him. If he hasn't, he's got even more credit coming his way. Because look at that. That's a very, very good game. Very, very good game. Followed pretty much every fundamental. And look at this position. He's pushing his pass pawn. He's activating his king into the center. I mean, this guy's playing great. He's using his king to help his pass pawn. What can we say, guys? What can we say? I thought I thought he played super, super well. Very impressive stuff. Very impressive stuff. So there you go. There's someone who uh, almost looks like he's employing some of the habits, and and maybe he's improving as a result. Okay. Let's see what he goes for. Okay, e4. You guys know the drill. It's e5 time. E5 time. F3. Don't know what that move is all about, but it doesn't look too great. Let's just get the knights developed, then the bishop out. Ooh, d4. Okay, that's going to be a capture. You guys know it. Always capturing. The knight comes out. Okay, the bishop comes out. And... None of this should be surprising. You know, I've, I've tried my best to play these moves every single time. D6, but okay. Castle as soon as possible. D6 is probably going to happen. And, you know, Rook here, Bishop there. All the usual moves. All the usual moves. C3. Um, let's play D6. Rook here, Bishop there. Ah, been attacked. I've been attacked. We've seen this before. Attacking my bishop, I'm gonna move back. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you that for free, and I'm still controlling the center here from b6. Hey AJ Ingram, what's going on, man? Okay, the queen goes there. Well, this is a perfect opportunity. I get developed to my favorite square. And I hit the queen. Perfect. Perfect. And you see how my opponent is not comparable to my position right now. I mean, my position is much, much better. Much, much better. G4, what are these moves? I'm going to try to stay focused here. Play queen d7. Actually, queen e7 in this particular position maybe looks a bit better because it's an open file and I kind of do control more central squares. But it doesn't really matter. Oh, hey, he snuck one by me. That's a long way. I didn't even see that. That's a long way away. Rook g1. Um, so rook d8. We got our pieces in the... Um, 
in the middle here. Speaking of trades, that's a great trade if I can take it next move. Hey, you want to leave your rook there, buddy? I forgot about you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Almost forgot about you there. And uh, wow, my opponent's got a, a great position right now. Great position right now. After he takes, this is almost like a puzzle. It's like, how do you keep your pieces exactly where they are, but lose your rook? It's like a brain teaser or something. I don't even know how to do that. Uh, he goes knight f4. Okay, what am I going to do, guys? I'm going to play h6. h6, I'm done developing. I don't care what's happening. h6, get h6 in. Get h6. H6 is important. I know it looks like I'm crushing. I've already won a rook. You know, easy win, easy win. But you still take the time to play this. It's important. It's important. Oh, guys. Two free rooks this game? I am blessed. I am blessed. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, there. Now we're going to get our random pawn moves on the queen side. Okay, that looks like a capture. I'm gonna go for that. Uh, it looks like another capture, so we're gonna go for it. What do I mean by no tactics? I, I mean exactly what it says. Basically, I can't do any forks. You know, I can't do any tactics to win material um, when I'm starting out here. I'm gonna focus on other things. Control the center, a lot more important things, and we'll add some tactics in later. Yeah, you guys can follow my Instagram, Adam on Hamilton. I don't post that much because of COVID and there's just nothing to take a photo of. What? I'm going to take a photo of me just sitting here. <laughs> you guys can watch me every day. So I haven't been posting that much during COVID, but um, we'll, we'll, get posting, uh, we'll get posting again when things open up. Bishop D2 is hitting my knight. Generally, what have I said? When the knights attack, just move it back. Back to controlling the center. Back to controlling the center. Why not take the h2 pawn? I could, but I mean, there's been so many other things to take. You know, all the action has been over here. I've had my pieces hanging, and this is not the most relevant thing to take. It's more important to be focused on the center. Do I miss clubbing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Miss dancing, miss techno music, all that. Okay, it's time for, you know, it's time for something. How about this? A central pawn move. Looks like a great one. Uh, 2413 says, Chesbra, how do I, uh, pronoun say your name? Um, I, I could probably tell you for a nominal fee. Let's, let's go for a hundred dollars. hundred dollars, I'll tell you how to pronounce it. We're going to take that. Uh, knight takes d5. He didn't take it back. I'm probably wondering why he's a bad player. Uh, bishop takes c4. Hey, it's a free piece. It's a free piece. Uh, that's a capture. We always take captures. Oh, what's Buddy doing? He's hanging his queen as well. This has been a massacre. He's hanging every piece, but you see how, like, uh, Fundamental chess works to the middle. It's, it's all paid off here. And, you know, this is just an example of everything working really well. Well, Ruin, the whole point of this series is, obviously, I can't simulate not seeing free pieces. Part of the rules are take every free piece that you see. Of course, in practice, you're not going to be able to do that. But I can't make you take every free piece. I can't make you miss taking every free piece. The point is, that's up to you guys. The rule that you should follow to try to get as close to that as possible is take every free piece. So it's up to you guys to practice every single game, try to get better and better at learning where the pieces move, how far they stretch, everything like that, so that you can get closer and closer to perfection, which is taking every free piece. Because even at my level, when I'm playing at a grandmaster level, I'm not taking every free piece. I'll miss some from time to time. 
but I've trained it over the years and I, you know, I'll miss, I'll miss a lot less free pieces, uh, than, than when I was, you know, 600. So, um, let's get the queen in. So these are only guidelines and rules for you to try to follow, but you still have to improve at them. It's not like, oh yeah, just uh, once we learn tactics, pins, it's not like you're going to see every pin. You're going to have to work on that. You're going to have to practice pins. You have to go to tactics trainer and, and learn them. Um, the same thing with, uh, let's bring our bishop to the middle. The same thing with taking free pieces. You're not going to take every free piece, but it's up to you guys to go and practice. And every time your opponent hangs something, really try to focus and make sure you're taking it. So. Of course, this is not the keys to the kingdom. You still got to put some work in, but if you follow these rules and you do your best to try to master them, they will pay off. Okay, um, bishop takes. Let's take with the queen. That's check. Um, we're just going to keep checking him, basically. Whenever I, whenever I say, like, hey, try to get a checkmate in, the, the best advice is just check all the time. If you check all the time, hopefully you will get a mate eventually. Oh, uh, there you go. That's actually a checkmate there. That's actually a checkmate there. So that was a relatively easy game because he was just hanging everything. He was hanging everything. But um, we did our best to not hang pieces ourselves. And when presented with free, free things, we are going to take it. We are going to take it. So this guy, for example, would learn a lot from this fundamental series. His play would improve like times 10. It really would. It really would. Okay, we'll go for the next game. We got a win there. Let's go. E4. Knight F3. You guys know it. You guys know it. Okay, knight out. Um, let's go here. Turn the music up. I have the music pretty low right now because, you know, it is kind of more focused on the instruction. Hopefully you guys are taking notes, learning something. Um, so I have the music lower for a, for a reason, for a reason today. Uh, H6, let's play D3. We're going to go for this. Uh, our next plan is bishop there, or sorry, rook here, followed by bishop there. Okay. Solid, and if he takes, we're going to take with the rook. You're supposed to be taking notes. Exactly, you are. Come on. Can't be uh, missing out. Can't be slacking there. Yep. We can tell our opponent is a very principled player. Now he's setting a nasty trap for me. And you know what? I have actually seen this before. Not in my Grandmaster career, in my 400 ELO career. I started at 400 and I actually had this before. Someone did this and you know what? I took it. And we always take with the knight first. Take with the knight first. And after I took with the knight first, he took with the pawn. And what have I learned? I've learned that these two pieces, when there's a, a pawn there, it's kind of spooning me a little bit. Like it's, it's attacking both at the same time. So I've learned not to do that. But I'm still going to take this. So I'm going to take with the bishop. I'm going to take with the bishop. You still got to follow the rules. We got, you know, the fundamentals. You got to take now the knight, this square, this square. Well, this square is available. Instant. That's a central square. Okay, that's a, an exchange. We're going to take that immediately. Not going to calculate. Not going to calculate. Um, queen into the middle. Okay, bishop gets attacked. Now, when the bishop gets attacked, here and here are both very logical moves. I'm going to go here. It's a central square. Um, if it gets attacked again, I'll go back. But uh, either of these habits are good to have. Okay, he goes here. Although there's something in the corner, we are at the 400 to you know, 800 elo bracket. When something like this happens, you react to it. I see that, I'm going to take it. We're going to react. 
And now if he still leaves it hanging, well, I can't miss out on a hanging rook there in the corner. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, he plays bishop here. My bishop is under attack. And going back to a central square makes a lot of sense. There we go. Nothing too fancy here, guys. I did. I did give him a fair chance to save the rook there. After knight e5, it's a little advanced to take the rook there, because that would mean like you knew it was pinned. The idea after knight e5 is you just take it. You're just following the principles. Okay, he goes rook there. Let's play. Oh, wait. No, we're not done developing. Rook d1. And you know what comes next? After rook d1, we're not going to get crazy. We're not going to do all this stuff. We have to get h3 in. He goes there. That's a capture. And next is h3. Now we're done developing h3, so we do not get checkmated. Notice how I have that in all my games. And now a few random pawn moves over here. They're never going to be the best moves, but just a few random ones over there. Okay, now probably some moves in the center of the board. Let's get the, maybe the queen up here. Queen there. Well, the good thing is I know I have one extra rook, so I'm not going to be too upset bringing my queen in the middle. Uh, it's all about these center squares. Let's put my queen here and let's bring my rook up. Damn. We got a guy who's really demonstrating that he can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's see if he gets to 10. 9, 10. Very impressive. Okay, start again. All right, let's go rookie 4. 12. Oh, no, that's not the first number. No, 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 you got to start again. No, no, start again. Try again. Last chance. Oh, 14. Oh, no, this guy doesn't know how to count. All right. All right, have a seat, buddy. I timed it out for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 1 to 10 minutes. Representative, like, we'll, we'll see if he can come back and actually and actually do it. Um, Queen there, let's see. double the rooks in the center. Queen takes d3. I mean, we're dropping pawns here, but we can't be too upset with uh, uh, with the pieces in the middle here. Let's Let's make a threat. Let's attack a rook. Oh, Jonas. Man, you're, you're, you're counting up to 10 after someone else did? Man, we're going to have to time that out because that's just not funny. Like, dude. Come on, my, my homie, uh, my homie uh, did it first, you know? My homie did it first. Got to come up with something new. Um, rook c3. Okay, what are we going to do here? Uh, got our pieces in the middle. He's playing well, by the way, playing very well. I mean, of course, it's very tempting to give some checks here. Very tempting to give some checks here. King and h7. And how, how am I going to attack this guy? It's like, okay, let's go here and actually make a threat. Attack a pawn. Maybe another check. Maybe another check needs to happen. Yeah, no, he's got a solid position. This is tough to break through. It really is. And this is going to happen to you. You're going to be up a rook and you're like, dude, how do I win this game? What's going on here? What's going on here? I can't win. What openings do we know so far? <laughs> Whatever white does, we copy it. Whatever black does, we copy it. Uh, check, 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 check. What do we have here? This guy's playing really well. Hmm. Strong player. Okay, let's, let's bring the pieces back to the center. Rook g4. Hey, there's lots of moves that I could play here. Lots of good ones available. But the point is that every game I've played so far, I've pretty much made moves that revolve around the center of the board. So uh, I am trying to play in that fashion. Um, let's move our rook up. It's just that I think the idea of playing queen here, rook there, and going for a mate, it's a, it's a little advanced. It'll come with time. We'll, we'll, we'll eventually get up to that level where we're realizing how to convert our advantages. But... I think it's very normal with this solid position that our opponent has to be to have to, a lot of struggles uh, converting this. This is not easy at all. Queen back again. I don't really uh, let's just put this pawn here. I don't really have anything that I'm doing right now. I don't really know how to win this game. I'm losing more 
losing four pawns, to be honest with you. Um, let's bring the rook to an open file. He is very solid. No, my, my opponent is playing very well. My opponent is playing very well. A5. Um, let's get the rook up. Try to take a pawn here. Don't lose on time, please. Hey, it happens. You're not going to win every game. You're not going to play perfectly. Let's take this pawn. We're trying our best here. We're we're bringing the rook up. We're taking some pawns in the end game. Oh, that's a queen. Hey, we're gonna take that. We're gonna take that. Remember? And now we gotta we gotta take some pawns. This is the end game. So hang on. Let me let me try to take this pawn. Get rid of it. Let's get rid of this pawn. Yes. Pawn for me, please. Pawn for me, please. Let's attack this pawn. I want to. I want to try to take it. I want to try to take it. Uh, hey, that's a free rook. He's giving me free stuff. Oh, hey, that's a free queen. I won two queen. Hey, I just won a queen. I won two queens this game. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Let's get the queen in the middle. Now I gotta go for a checkmate. I gotta use both my pieces to try to get close to this king. That's what I have to do. Check. Stay in the center if we can. Check to you, buddy. Check to you. Uh, let's take a pawn. Let's take a pawn. Let's take a pawn with check. I'm just going to take everything. Take all those pawns. I'm going to take this guy next, probably. Take. Oh, lucky that's a, not a stalemate. Lucky that's not a stalemate. Check. Checkmate. Well, we, we, we got that by the skin of our teeth there. One more move and it could have been a stalemate. One more move and it could have been a stalemate. GG. He played very well, though. And that's more reflective of how we might win this game because there was a good chance I was going to lose that game for the most part. He had a really solid pawn chain. Not easy to break through. Next game, let's let's see if we can uh, get closer and closer to 700. Let's see. Okay, e4. We know we're going with e5. We know we're going with e5. Knight there. You guys should be right here with me. We know we're bringing the opposite knight out. Bishop there. We've talked about the fried liver. Everyone wants to do it. Let's go bishop here. We're not going to allow him to do that. We're not going to allow him to do that. This guy is probably, he can't wait to play this move. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> Finally, I can play knight g5. Castle ASAP. There we go. Anytime we see this move, you guys know we play this. h6, right? Ah, bishop h4. This guy's OP. He's playing a strong move. You can always tell that someone is a little bit better than someone else when they start to play like this. Taking the knight is a sign of someone who still needs to improve. Bishop back is someone who's learned that already. Whenever you pin a knight, the pressure is the pin. As soon as you take the knight, there's nothing impressive about that. You're giving me a bishop, uh, you get a knight. The, the pressure is the pin. You have to keep the pin. Okay, let's go rook here, and I'm going to go bishop here. We've, we've seen, uh, seen this before. Okay, that's a trade. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it, and let's get my queen up and bring my rook over. And solid, solid. Why not pawn to g5? That is what I call a bad habit. We're going to try not to do pawn to g5. Pawn to g5, we got to uh, avoid. Okay, we've got everything in the position. Uh, let's go for a random pawn move. We've already got our h6 in there. What should, what should our opponent be doing here? Well, absolutely. Maybe bishop takes knight. He's been missing that for a while. Let's go with b6. Some more random pawns. Let's go. You know, and this is something to learn from. Uh, it's hard to really understand that, you know, double pawns are bad at this level. 
I mean, at the end of the day, it is defended, and that's all I'm seeing, so. Um, okay, our turn, we've pretty much done everything. Can we do something aggressive in the middle of the board? I'm not sure yet. Um, let's say, like, queen here might make sense. Let's say queen here, we're threatening a pawn, something to take. Queen d3, he's covered it. He's covered it. Well, I'm actually running out of moves. I don't have any more pawns to push. Uh, maybe I double my rooks or something on the e-file, the d-file, but it's tough. I don't really have anything to do here. I'm going to go like this and maybe double the rooks. Double the rooks. Okay, he goes a4. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, and very tough position. I don't really have anything to do. Yeah, you guys can uh, confess some bad habits here. It's a safe space. Safe space. Um, what to do? I gotta make some moves here. Let's attack a piece or something. This is tough. He's playing well. Very well, by the way. If anyone's wondering why I'm having a tough time in this game, it's my opponent. My opponent is playing very, very well. Um... Ooh. Got him. That's like offering a draw. As soon as you start complimenting your opponent, oh my gosh, he's playing so well. Blunder. Blunder. We got him. So he, he played a fantastic game there. Very tough for me to do anything. Um, he goes here. Let's make a move that um, is always good. Knight in the middle of the board looking for trades. Looking for trades. Uh, attacking my bishop, well, we know we just go back when that happens, we still control the center. Queen f3. Uh, tough to play a move, but let's bring the rook back towards the center. Love from Brazil, hey, what's up, uh, Joao? Okay, b4. Well, we're obviously going to take. Uh, we do captures, and hey, that looks like a, something we can take for free. And I'm just going to bring the bishop back. Make sure we get back controlling the center. See you, Bodens. Good night, buddy. Yeah, Potent Ponables probably did catch you with a sub. Uh, let's move one of our rooks to an open file where it actually attacks something. I've got a couple pawns that I might want to take here. Okay, he goes and defends it. Let's go and attack it. Let's go and attack it. So for those tuning in, this is actually our fourth session of this series. Um, the next session will probably be next Wednesday. So next week on Wednesday. Um, usually happens around the same time. Uh, usually do some rapid chess with Dan, who's about 12, 1300. He's a buddy we got on the channel here. Um, and we usually end up starting the habits series around like, uh, I don't know, like 7 p.m. Eastern time, something like that. So that's what we usually do. Wednesday next week is going to be the next one. But if you're not in our Discord, you should definitely join our Discord. Exclamation mark Discord in chat is going to bring that up. If you're following us on Twitter, you're in our Discord, or you're sub to us on YouTube, following us on, on Twitch. There's lots of ways you guys can be notified when we're going to be streaming next. But specifically the Discord, every Sunday night, we post the schedule of when we're going to be streaming for the next week. And we post that on Twitter, so there's lots of places you can find that. But... Um, if you're following along in this series, it, it's, you get the most benefit out of this series if you watch every single edition, you know, every single episode. So let's take this free pawn. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of ways like I just mentioned, but the Discord is kind of one of the, I think it's uh, one of the coolest ways to follow along. Um, you get updates, uh, we chat, we have lots of other things. So we chat about chess, sports, you know, blunders, tactics, literally everything. We have a pretty active uh, Discord, something like 13, 15,000 people. So 
lots of lots of chats going on in there. I'm sure you can find uh, find a few reasons to stick around. But if you just have the Discord for the announcements, that'll be worth it too. We always post when we're going live. And the next time I stream, there's going to be a new set of habits. So definitely something worth uh, sticking around for. Um, let's push some pawns in the middle of the board. Chess.com club. Yeah, we host lots of tournaments, viewer tournaments on the channel. Oh my goodness, that's a free queen. We're going to take that. We have to. That's a big blunder by my opponent. And more pawn pushes, please. More pawn pushes. Um, yeah, you have to join our club to play in our tournaments, but we do host a lot of tournaments on the channel. We really do. We really do. Okay. Attacks my queen. Uh, I think I'm going to stay... You know, controlling some center squares there, but also I'm really trying to push this pawn. I, every time I I, uh, I get a position like this, I always say push, 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 push the pawns. Oh, it's a little unlucky. Uh, the rook was there. Let's go e4. Pushing more pawns in the center. Let's take it. Hacking the rook here. See what our opponent does. Ooh, it's annoying. I'm going to have to... Uh, Bring our queen back. So I am attacking the rook, and I suppose I will go for a trade. Okay. He's going to take that. He's going to take it. We'll see what he does. He'll probably... Oh, my goodness. He's giving me that... What, what's Buddy up to over here? Hey. Hey. What's he doing? What's going on here? Oh, oh, yeah. This is ridiculous. This guy's a dirty flagger. Let's see what we did. Okay, our opponent was 8.9% accuracy. <laughs> 8.9. Not the best. Not the best. Uh, we managed 46.4. And let's see. Look how many missed wins our opponent had. Five missed wins. <laughs> Five missed wins. Does anyone know what they're going to be, by the way? If anyone had to guess, thinking back about that game, how many missed wins? Five. Do you guys have any idea where they're going to be? All the pieces he blundered? No, well, if you miss a win, it's not going to have anything to do with blundering a piece. Those are going to be my missed wins if I don't take them. I think that a lot of the missed wins, maybe all of them, are just going to be bishop takes knight. Doubling the pawns here is probably going to be a missed win every time he doesn't play it. I have a feeling. But we'll see. I don't actually know. Because the missed wins are often pretty scuffed in this analysis, as you guys have seen. Okay. Okay, so castling is a missed win because he didn't play bishop takes f6, like I thought. Let's see if it's a missed win on the next move, too. Yeah, it's another missed win. That's two missed wins. I'm just farming missed wins here. If he's not taking my knight, that's a missed win. Another missed win. Yep. <laughs> yep. E every single time he did not take that, it's a missed win. And then the last one was knight takes c7, which I did blunder for a moment. So that my guy is going for a missed win world record. Poor, poor guy. Why is bishop takes f6 so strong? It is actually important to maybe take a look at. Uh, why is it so strong? After this happens, I'm going to take back. You might be wondering, why is this so bad? Well, after queen takes here, what's going to happen is white's going to bring the knight here and bring the knight here. And that's literally a checkmate, unless I sacrifice for the knight. This knight is also going to jump in here, and that's a checkmate. It's so bad here. And it's, all, it's impossible to defend without giving up some material. So every single time that he could have done this, he could have taken this pawn and then brought one of his knights in, and it would have essentially led to me, or I would have had to give up like all my material. I would have had to give up all my material. So that's why he got so many missed wins, because 
Honestly, I, I agree with these missed wins because taking that night when you double the pawns, that should be an automatic habit. Really, if, if you can do that and double the pawns in front of the king, that should be a habit. That should be a habit. And that's something that, you know, I need to be more careful of with the black pieces. I can't be allowing that. Double pawns is something I need to be careful of. Can I explain why g5 is bad? Well, of course, g5 is a better move than what I played. But in general, why is g5 bad? It moves the pawn in front of the king. It's the same reason I don't want this to happen. So I am never going to advocate for g5. In this particular position, you could look at something like this and say, look, after that, white takes on f6, he wins two pawns, and he gets his piece back. It's not going to be any good. But we never want to play g5. g5 is a bad habit. Moving a pawn in front of your king, it's, it's usually going to turn out very, very poorly for you. Very poorly for you. e4, we'll go e5. Knight c6, we know when this knight comes out to control those squares, we, we go with this knight. Captures, we'll, we'll take. He's going to take back, we're going to take. Queen takes, and we've actually had this before. Remember the last time we had this, we brought our knight out, they pushed the pawn, and we just had to bring the knight back. Does anyone remember? We had this before. We've been getting really hurt, actually, in our series so far, by players who play f4 and d4. And then we take and we, we lose our central pawn. We lose our central pawn. Okay, bishop there. We know we play h6. What habits am I going to fall for the next level? Well, I can't let you guys know. But I did say, and I am going to honor this, that if you're tier 3, we have a channel in our Discord for tier 3 subs only. Um, it's called the First Class Channel. And I did say that I would put a sneak preview well ahead of my next stream on Wednesday in there of some of the rules that I have planned. So you can, if you're a tier three sub, you can find it in there. Otherwise, you'll find out next uh, next Wednesday when I do the next stream. Okay, uh, e5, hitting my queen. We got to move the queen. I'm actually going to go back here. Why? Because in previous games, when my queen got attacked, I tried to keep it out here and I actually got in trouble. So I'm just going to go all the way back. I'm going to go all the way back. Knight c3, and let's go d6. Um, I can't put my bishop there. I'm going to play bishop e6, bishop d6. I want to get my guys developed. Um, knight d5, again, this is a capture. We're always going to do captures. We're always going to do captures. Uh, queen takes c5 is going to be a check. And it might be a painful check. <laughs> it might be a painful check. So one thing that you guys have noticed, like all the times that I get absolutely annihilated in the opening, what has been the general theme? It's been this. So keep this in mind. This is useful to know. Um, as white, it's been any move like f4 or d4. Any move that my central pawn disappears, because as soon as you lose control of the center, you moves like this, you get pushed around. E5, white has more space here. So all the times that I've got absolutely crushed, it's been this theme. White controls the center, he has more space, and I just don't get a chance to develop. That has been the theme every time. Okay, queen there. We're going to put our bishop here. We got to block the check. Okay, he's tracking us again. We got to somehow survive this as well. Let's block like this. Love from India. Hey, thanks, Ro here. Hey, it ain't my it ain't my best position, but we're 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 in here somehow. Let's take that. Let's take that. Let's see what he's gonna do. When are we going to learn not to give up central pawns? Well, I assume that's going to kick in at the next level. You'll have to wait and see. But the next time I stream uh, this series, it will be um, it will be with a new set of rules. Okay, castles. Um, basically, I, I want a castle here, and I absolutely should. But I will end up losing my piece as a result. 
So uh, we've reached actually one of the important points where I don't really have a compass for what I'm supposed to do here. Um, if I castle, I lose a piece for free. And I, I can't do that. If I castle this way, with, this way, I lose the piece as well. So I, I kind of have to... <laughs> I kind of have to make some moves that I don't really have any experience making. I'm going to go f6. I'm going to try to attack his queen. These are not going to be pretty moves. These are not going to be pretty moves. But I'm getting crushed here. Like, look at his opening. It's fantastic. He's going to bring his other rook over. Uh, this is a game that I deserve to get crushed. Definitely. Definitely. But it's been a theme. Every time that our pawn has left the center, he takes f4, he takes d4. Based on white's opening, it has, it has hurt. It has hurt. Uh, I'm in check. Um, okay, if I take, I'm just going to lose my queen. Do I even notice my queen is hanging? Probably not. That's a discovered attack. I got to move my king. And knight c7 is a very strong move, unfortunately. A very strong move, unfortunately. It is very easy to play with uh, white there, Mark. It is. It's uh, not pleasant for me here. Okay, he takes my queen. Well, at the very least, I'm going to take his queen, you know. We're going to try our best. He takes my rook. I'm going to take it back. And, you know, all... All things uh, considered here, guys, it's not that bad. I mean, I'm getting crushed, but hey, we're in an endgame. Let's get our king to the middle. At least we know that rule. <laughs> At least we know that rule. At least we know that rule. Okay, rook uh, attacking pawns. Remember, in the endgame, king to the middle and rook attacking pawns. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I know how to do. Okay, he's taking pawns. I'm taking pawns. Yeah, kind of survived. Okay, king in the middle. We're, we're kind of living here. We're kind of living. Okay, he goes there. I'm going to continue with my sort of mini plan here of just attacking every pawn. I've got my king in the middle. If I can take this pawn, you guys know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be pushing that pass pawn. King is activated in the end game, guys. It's all about bringing that king up. We're activating. The dad bot is shuffling, as they say. The dad bot is shuffling. Okay, he's attacking my bishop. I gotta save this guy. Let's go here. We're controlling the center as well, which is a, a nice, a nice little touch. Nice little touch. Okay. Uh, I can't take this pawn anymore, which is a little unfortunate, but this guy's actually a pass pawn. Let's not forget that. Let's push. Let's push. That is a pass pawn. Let's not forget our rules. If we want to take pawns, we want to push pass pawns. Here we go, pass pawn. Yeah, rook takes a2 is definitely a play, but um, pass pawn. We've seen this strategy work before, so forgive me. I got I got to push my pass pawn. Okay, let's keep pushing. Keep pushing. Check. Okay, well I only have one square, so maybe this is a an easy decision. I got to put my king here. My pass pawn started here. Actually, to be fair, it started here. Do you guys remember? I played f6, I took his queen, and then I played here, here, and here. I'm trying to go for the touchdown here, guys. Oh. <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. And my king can't even get back in here, which is unfortunate. My bishop can't even go here to attack this pawn. Okay, I'm just going to push my other pawn. This is, uh, this is rough. This is rough. King c2. Uh, I mean, again, I'd love to go here, somehow get a pass pawn, but I can't. I can't even attack this pawn.
Why am I not checking him? I can't check him. Okay, at least I can take this pawn now. Now I have another pass pawn. Now I have another pass pawn. So hey, you know what I'm going to do? Push, push, push. I'm going to push. Uh, okay, that's the check, but I guess it's a free pawn, so I'll take it. Uh, that rook. Um, I'll, first of all, take it. Why not? And, well, that's a free piece. I have to take a free piece. You guys know that. Okay, let's save our bishop. We're going to still attack the center here. Oh, let's take that pawn. Let's take that pawn. We have to take it. We got to take all these pawns. Let's go here. Okay, we'll bring our king to the center. Okay, let's defend our pawn. Oh, it went on time. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? That's definitely a KO. This is definitely a KO. Definitely, definitely. Damn, that was a very good game overall. That was a very good game. Now, it is a draw technically here at the end, but we, we didn't even have time to play this position. If we played this out, of course, I would have ended up stalemating him. I would have brought my king over and just pushed that pass pawn. And hey, if he ran away or something, I could have won. But if he kept his king here, of course, we would have stalemated. And I've had a stalemate like this before in this series already. It was exactly like this. Ooh, this guy's almost 700 himself. This is this is going to be a tough game. This is going to be a tough game. Okay, knight f3. Let's stick to the basics here. Knight's out. Bishop's out. Castle ASAP. D3. Uh, Rook e1. Now, I know I'm doing these quickly, but you guys should, should be playing these moves quickly as well. Like, these are moves that they're all habits by now. Oh, bishop over there. Well, first thing, that's a trade. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make sure to get rid of that. Okay, h3. Oh, he, he took he took our knight. We're gonna take back. Whenever there's a bishop there, we always play this, but we just get rid of that trade first. Knight attacks our queen. Now, last time we played our queen over there, remember we got checked? We lost our queen. So I'm gonna go back here. That's that's what we learned from that. That's what we learned from that. Okay, a6. I'm just gonna continue my development. Queen there, rook over. Uh, I'm going to go to the center, and yeah, if I get attacked, maybe this wasn't the best move, but I'll go back here. I'll go back here. You know, all, we're all towards the center here. Okay, he goes here. Now, should I be taking this? Maybe. But he's attacking my knight. We play reactive chess here. I got to move this knight. Where should I move? Guys, any ideas? I can't go to the center. So where do I put this guy? An important decision, because we want to be as much in the center as possible, but... In this situation, we don't have central squares available. A potent with a quick answer. I love it. That's very correct. Very correct. E2. E2 controls the central square. Those are the four squares in the center. E2 controls one of them. D1 doesn't control any of them. So we'll go to E2. And all these other squares are further away from the center. We want to keep things a lot more centralized. Knight E2, definitely. Okay, he pushes. Now, first things first, he goes here. We got to take this material in the corner, and then we're going to go for trades. We're going to take the material. I mean, it's a rook for a bishop. I can't say no. And then we're going to go for trades. Okay, let's bring the rook to the middle. We've got h3 in, probably some random pawn moves over here, and then we can, then we can continue. Okay, he goes here. Let's do some pawn moves over here. Let's take it. And let's do some more pawn moves. Some more pawn moves. He's going to take that, eh? We'll take in the center. And let's see what we can do. We finished all our, all our development here. Um, let's continue. Pawn move in the center. Can't, can't be too bad. Can't be too bad. Keep moving pawns in the center. And we're going to have to use our rooks pretty soon. We're going to have to use our rooks pretty soon. Oh, okay. That, that looks like an exchange. We're going to take it immediately. And, okay, never mind. That's another exchange. We're going to take it immediately. 
Let's get the rook into the, the center. How many times have you guys seen me play this? Like, I, you know, as soon as we trade rooks, I bring the other rook over, and then I bring the queen over and try to uh, get my queen in the center. King f7, let's get my queen in the middle here. Attacking two things here. Uh, let's take this pawn. So the nice thing is that sometimes you end up playing, you know, just by playing these fundamental moves, you probably start to see tactics. Maybe later on we learn about tactics and we learn about forks. This is an example. This isn't a, like a really serious fork, but let's see here. We're attacking two things. Technically, it's a fork. Do I even know what a fork is? Not really. But the idea is you go here. It's in the center. It's a move we've been playing a lot. And later on, once we learn what a fork is, we might say, oh, wow, I, maybe I've been doing a fork this whole time. I didn't realize it. He goes king there. Um, let's give him a check. Actually, let's go rook here. This move makes a lot of sense. Rook in the middle, attacking a knight. Why can I do this? Because I'm not going to get mated. I have an escape square. I have an escape square. Um, let's give him a check. Exactly. Jaguar cup. Or is that Igor cup? No, Jaguar cup. King over. Let's push a center pawn. Let's push a center pawn. Oh, that's free. That's a free knight. That is a free knight. Oh, okay. My rook's attacked. Let's give a check. Let's give a check. Um, we'll put our rook in the... Putting our rook in the center. Doing it on purpose? Well, of course I'm doing a lot of these things on purpose. <laughs> Remember, like, I, I'm a much stronger player than the level which I'm representing. So, of course I'm doing things on purpose. But... It is supposed to give you a pretty realistic take on what your experience might be playing with uh, these set of rules. So, of course, you know, I'm missing strong moves. But the point of this is you're supposed to miss strong moves. If you guys follow these, you'll miss them as well. You'll miss them as well. Free pawn. Well, great idea. Thanks, guys. Mate and one's not allowed. Mates are allowed. Um, but, you know, I, I play some checkmates. I don't play some checkmates. You're not going to see every single one. I don't really have a specific rule about checkmates, so I kind of just play half them, half of the ones I see, <laughs> if that makes sense, just to kind of represent a, a normal distribution. But no, there's no specific rules about mates. All right, and we'll give a check. Hey, it's a mate. Not going to complain. Play till we lose, guys. Play till we lose. Oh no, seven fifty six. Okay, I think I think we're in trouble here, guys. I think we're in trouble. This might be the end of our watch here. This might be the end of our watch. Oh, and he's got an aggressive opening. Well, we know we're taking that. That's for sure. Our buddy, uh, our buddy over here is being very difficult. What the heck is this opening? This guy's a noob. He's already losing, uh, losing material. Okay, I literally don't know what this guy's doing, but if I see things I can take, <laughs> I'm taking him, boys. I'm taking him. All right, uh, let's get the knights out. Okay. My opponent's in a deep think. A deep think. We're following our, our rules here, our principles. He castles. I'll get my bishop out to that, that favorite square. E5. Knight needs to move to the center if possible. Okay, we can go to E4. Always go to the center where possible. He goes knight d2. That's a trade. We're going to take that. And let's get castled ASAP. ASAP. 
Finally, we can. Our next move is probably going to be d6, and then we'll look to get our bishop out, controlling the, the center, either e6 or f5. This series will be available on YouTube, yes. d6. Okay, uh, we got to take with the queen or the bishop. Uh, we've already developed our bishop, so moving the queen towards the center seems to make a lot of sense. If our bishop was back here, then I would have said, let's take with the bishop. Uh, he goes queen to c3. Now, this is tough. This is tough to spot. Believe me, we're not going to spot it every single time. But we have actually seen this bishop and queen work together on this diagonal before, in today, in this exact series. Take on g7. So, we've looked at f6. Is f6 possible here? No, it is pinned. It is pinned. g6. Does g6 stop the queen from going there? Well, actually, the last time we had it, the queen was here. So g6 did stop it. But in this case, g6 does not help at all. So how can I actually stop this? Anybody? I can't play f6, I can't play g6. This is quite annoying. How do I prevent the queen from getting to g7? Bishop d4, I see a lot of bishop d4. Make sure you're doing your counting. After bishop d4, how many pieces do I have defending d4? And how many does he have attacking? Can we count it up? Bishop d4. One, two, three. And I have one, two. I'm going to be losing. I'm going to be losing material there. I can't be doing that. We can't be hanging free pieces. Knight e5, same deal. Knight d4, same deal. Look how much firepower he has attacking this square and this square. He has them all covered. They're, those are not options. Those are not options. So I actually need to defend this. How can I defend it? If none of these are working, well, I actually have to use my queen. So you guys are right. Queen f6, queen g6, queen h6. I have to pick one of these moves. Okay, so let's bring our queen over there. Let's bring our queen over there. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are playing ha betting Halo? And Neil and RPM are paying for their sins. Nine gifted subs and ten gifted subs from Neil and RPM. Damn, Eric is uh, securing the side hustle. The Halo side hustle. There we go. Try to take us out in chess? Nope. Take us out in Halo? Nope. <laughs> 95. Okay, that is a, a trade. I have to, I have to trade that. Um, my bishop's under attack. Generally, when my bishop's under attack, I, I go backwards. Thank you very much, though, guys. Thank you very much. Bishop back to b6. And my next move is going to be to finally finish development. It's been a while. This has not been a good game for me. Uh, I'm barely finishing development, but I do want to get here or here because it controls the center with this bishop. And then I'm going to try to bring my rooks in and play h6. It's going to take me a long time, but that's my plan. That's my plan. Because that's been my plan every time so far. Okay, rook there. I'm going to go here and attack the center. Attack the center. He takes it. What is this? He's taking it. I get to take back. I think it's very, very realistic that you get clapped like this. That was a great game by my opponent. Very, a very, a very good game. A very, a very good game. Rook takes f5 and queen takes g7 mate. What can you do? I think I think he played a good game there. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if the opening was considered a little suspicious by the engine, but I I think I think he'll have a very good accuracy. Yeah, seven sixty two. It's a different class, you know. We are going to need to improve. Can't just play the exact same way and get all the way up to to seven hundred. It looks like he has eighty six point six accuracy. Again, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. It was a good game by him. It was a good game by him. But again, games where we get crushed, there's no surprise in this series. It's always been openings where we lose our pawn in the center. If I'm able to play this, this, bishop out, we usually get a very good game going. Yeah, and so he missed queen d5 there. That was his only real mistake. But after this, that's a very good move. Um, this maybe wasn't the best, but... You know, he's doubling in the center. He's playing very well. Every piece is aimed at my king. And after bishop f5, very normal move. 
rook takes f5 and queen takes g7. So I think it's very, very logical that at some point you are going to get crushed like that. That's, that's a pretty serious tactic. He just unquirked, um, which means that we'll probably, uh, well, yeah, I said we played till we lost. So we'll leave it there. We can check our account here. You know, these are our games from today. We've been all over the place. We, we had a good run at the end. It was some wind. But in general, wins, loss. We had a few draws. It didn't start out that well. We were like win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Um, and we even had a, yeah, this was the funny game. 4.3 accuracy. <laughs> Our opponent played very well that game. Full credit to him. Uh, yeah, we had a 4.3 game. So we've had some tough ones today. We had some tough ones. But overall, you know, overall, I think we did well. 69 accuracy, 62, 66, 81, 32, 68, 52. You know, those are good accuracies. It's not the best, but those are good accuracies to have. Those are good accuracies to have. Um, so I think we've probably played around 80 or 90 games in this series so far. Something like that. I'll get the official count after. But it's, not, it's, it's around that. I know it says 154, but I had to play a bunch of games on this account uh, just to level it up and then reset it to 400 so that I wouldn't gain like 500 ELO on the first game or something. I wanted to gain, you know, eight at a time per win, something to represent me actually being at 400 ELO. Hey guys, just a reminder that Building Habits is going to be a regular series on our YouTube channel. So make sure to get subscribed if you are not already. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm and let me know what you thought about the video. See you next time.